Okay, so welcome to the second video on EF hand uh, domains, which are a form of calcium sensors that are found in proteins, basically. Okay, so we've discussed how an EF hand is basically this loop, this polypeptide loop, uh, which has a lot of um, acidic residues, which when they donate their protons off, uh, become negatively charged. And those negative charges are then going to interact with this calcium ion, and that coordinates this calcium ion within this EF hand domain. Okay, so um, the next thing to discuss is that these EF hand domains rarely occur on their own. They generally occur in dimers. So you generally have two of them positioned right next to each other. And we're going to see an example of this um, when we study the uh, ultimate calcium sensor, which is calmodulin. And the protein calmodulin contains these EF hands. And basically, in calmodulin, the EF hands are in dimers, basically. So basically, what happens is, let's say this is a single EF hand here. What will happen is that the polypeptide will come down like so, and then it will form a linker uh, between uh, that first EF hand and then the second EF hand here. So basically what you get is you get two EF hands next to each other. So we could call this EF hand 1, and we could call this EF hand uh, 2, um, EF2 for short. And uh, this portion in between is basically just the linker loop. Um, I'll just move this up. So this is the linker loop in between. Uh, so you often end up uh, with two EF hands positioned next to each other. And this means that uh, you will uh, get a calcium ion binding to this EF hand. And you'll also get a calcium ion binding to this EF hand. So you'll get two calcium ions binding to this little sort of portion of the protein here. Right, so now let's look at an example of a protein which has EF hand domains in, and the most famous um, calcium binding protein potentially of them all is an example of this, so calmodulin. Right, so the structure of calmodulin then. Um, so calmodulin in cartoons, and, it, and the cartoons, you know, do sort of, uh, they are based around reality. Uh, so in cartoons, the way its structure is drawn, and as I say, this is based in what it actually looks like if you Google crystal structures of calmodulin. Um, what it basically has is it has two lobes. One lobe is known as the N lobe, and the other lobe is then known as the C lobe. Okay, and uh, when it's in its inactive state, i.e. when no calcium is bound to it, then it's known as apocalmodulin. And it's often denoted, uh, well, to avoid having to write apocalmodulin out, uh, people would often usually denote it apocam uh, for calmodulin, calmodulin, uh, ca for ca, ca there, and then m for modulin. Okay, so if you ever see apocam, and people, you often do write the c and the m as capitals, and then the a as a lowercase. If you see that, that just means calmodulin with no calcium bound to it. Now, uh, in both of these two lobes, in the N lobe and the C lobe, you find these dimers of uh, EF hand domains, basically. So what you have is, can I draw this? Is this a big enough picture? Um, maybe I should draw it bigger. Um, I'll draw it again, and I'll draw it bigger so that I can actually squeeze these in. So here is, in fact, I'll just draw one uh, lobe now. So I've zoomed in on one of the lobes, and basically what you find is that it has one of these little... EF hand dimers in it. So here is an EF hand dimer, which means that uh, each lobe of calmodulin binds two calcium ions. So a calcium ion is going to bind to this first EF hand domain in here, and a calcium ion is also going to bind to this EF hand domain here. And basically, each of the two lobes of calmodulin each has one of these uh, EF hand dimers. So each lobe binds two calcium ions. So the overall calmodulin molecule binds four calcium ions. And when it does, it's then uh, it then changes conformation and is then known as a calcium calmodulin complex. So calcium calmodulin complex. Okay. Uh, so let me bring this out. Calcium calmodulin complex. And uh, that's often, you know, that's a bit of a mouthful, so people often denote that. Ca2 plus Cam for calcium 
and then calmodulin. And basically, when the um, calcium binds to the four site binding sites of uh, calmodulin, what happens is that the um, structure of calmodulin changes somewhat. So basically, as you can see at the moment, it's sort of looped back over itself. It's sort of like got a curvature here. I've drawn in the cartoon this sort of curvature. So it's quite compact. What happens is that it completely sort of opens up and gets longer in uh, when calcium binds to it. In addition, this, this linker between the two lobes, initially that was a linear polypeptide, so it was just poly amino acid, amino acid, amino acid, amino acid. That linker changes its conformation to have an alpha helix. So basically, the polypeptide spirals in an alpha helix now. So you get like this spring <laughs> between um, the two lobes. So these are the two lobes of um, calmodulin. And now what they've got, I'll just draw these green dots to, to note that they have calcium bound to them. So they've got four calciums now bound to them. In fact, they probably could put in the um, EF. Um, hands there, can tie EF hand dimers. There's the if one. There's another. So there, there is our cartoon denoting that we have these two EF hand dimers. Calcium has bound to both of them. That's turned it from being in this apocalmodulin state to being in this calcium calmodulin complex state. And a very important aspect of this is that you have now got this alpha helix. This alpha helix is utterly essential for the function of the calcium calmodulin complex because basically what happens is cal calmodulin doesn't do anything by itself now. Calmodulin is just the calcium sensor. Calcium binds, it's changed conformation. But what does calmodulin do directly? It doesn't have any effect. What it does is it goes and binds to other proteins, which are actually going to be the effectors of the calcium signaling, um, and causes conformational changes in them. And the way it causes conformational changes in them is, let's say we have some innocent poor protein over here, uh, which is the protein uh, that's going to respond to the calcium. So this is our effector, basically. So this is some protein that we want to change because of the rise in calcium and calmodulin is going to mediate that change. Basically what happens is that calmodulin goes over here and will wrap its alpha helix around here. So the alpha helix ends up wrapping around here like so and um, you get this sort of calmodulin bound to the effector. And um, and when it does that, that will obviously change the conformation of the effector somewhat. And that change in the conformation of the effector will then trigger some downstream response. So calmodulin is really, really important in calcium signaling pathways. And the way it senses calcium is that it has these dimers of EF hand domains, basically.